This park is home to every single feathered species in Jurassic World Evolution 2, including some failed experiments. As the scientists were sciencing away trying to make feathered dinosaurs for this park, the first attempts came out a little more naked than intended. Oops. <laughs> Thankfully, they figured out how to make 100% properly feathered species, and those are the stars of this park. They kept these ones for research or a weird OnlyFans page. I don't know. I don't ask too many questions. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this park tour. <laughs> Welcome to the All Feathered Species Park. I hope this tour is going to give you plenty of inspiration for your own builds. We're here on the entry plaza and as you can see, I still love using the monorails for something other than trains. So here they just sort of like flank the entry plaza with two semi-circular structures and I felt like that was pretty... pretty, pretty nice. Add some height, some drama, you know, I like that. And at the center we have a bit of a garden. Like so, we have a lovely tree from a different biome right smack in the middle. There's some fountains sort of like separating these semicircles of path. And this way we have like a little peninsula with our hotels. And the idea there is that I would want my hotels close to the entry point. And I would also want them quite separate from the park. You know, just in case. You never know what might happen at a Jurassic World. <laughs> so from the central plaza, or not really the central plaza, but the entry plaza, we can go in several different directions. Uh, so we can head over in this direction, straight ahead, where we have some of our larger species. But for the sake of uh, building up the excitement, we're gonna go towards the smaller species first. Just giving you a good look at this uh, this little guest section over here. I think it's pretty cute. So yeah, we're going to go this way, which is going to take us to the island with the smaller dinosaurs. Now, this is the first of several little design elements that not so subtly hints at the, the feather theme of this park. So this was the first path art design that I sort of mimicked a feather, um, kept it a little bit abstract, and we're gonna see two more feather-inspired things in this park. This viewing gallery over here just looks into the... Uh, I might as well show you. I mean, you're here for the tour. You're here for the full experience. So this is the... Um, yeah, the, the holding pen for the release of the brand new dinosaurs. Oh, there you go. Oh god, that's the flashlight. <laughs> so this is where people would come to see you know, new species come into the park. Obviously, at the moment, we are maxed out with 11 feathered species. They're all in this park. And until the next DLC, which we don't even know if, if it'll introduce more feathered species. But yeah, until the next feather dinosaur comes into our park, this park is done for now. Uh, so yeah, you'll see better from like an aerial perspective what I mean with the feathered path design. Uh, I put a little bunker off to the side here. You can just imagine that it serves a different purpose. Same with this hotel over here. I just really love this building. I don't always necessarily use it as a hotel. I just think the building is super awesome. You could pretend it's something else. You could pretend it's like a, a more architecturally old gift shop or whatever you want, really. Just use your imagination is what I always say. So the park is connected with these really long land bridges. You can see right here, the park has a lot of water. And that's because I used one of my... Whoa, whoa, excuse me, sorry. That's because this park is based on one of the ideas that I really like using when you're dealing with a really big map. So specifically for the square maps that we now have, just create your own islands on the map. And that way, yes, you are wasting a lot of space with just water. But let's be honest, if you fill the entire space, you're gonna get very bad frames. I mean, we're at, uh, like, in the high 30s right now, right? So you can just imagine what's gonna happen if you fill an entire map with as much detail as I always do. So... Uh, because there's only 11 species in this park, there are obviously very, very big, very wide guest areas, promenades, you can see that right here. This is a little bit of a quieter area of the park. The guests really sh <laughs> Um, sure. 
I think they're reporting on the sky or something like, ah, yes, yes, it's, it's blue. Can confirm, it is still blue. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the guests definitely show their preference with regards to uh, where they conglomerate and sort of crowd and cause congestion. It's pretty quiet over here. Off to the side, just two amenity buildings and one of many, many seating sections in the park. And what I use a lot are these wall pieces. So, you know, guests can enjoy the surrounding environment. But enough of that, we need to see our first creature because this is, after all, a prehistoric species park. So let me show you some prehistoric species. And the first one in this aviary over here is the Dimorphodon. Uh, technically, I would guess you could argue with it being feathered. It's more, uh, it's pycnofibers. Where basically all of the fuzzy species are in this park, okay? You can see it sitting on the rock over there. Wow, they really don't like the perch. This is interesting. Oh, hold on. No, this is actually interesting. I always thought that in terms of the coating, they preferred the perch, but it seems like they actually prefer the rocks. So he he goes flappy flappy off into the sky. Whee! All right. Let's move on. Again, this is like the section of the park with the smaller species. Case in points, the Moros Intrepidus over here. I left this completely open. Uh, I probably should have lined this with wall pieces as well, honestly. Because you know what's going to happen. Guests are going to walk into this enclosure and they're going to get attacked. Because people are stupid. So yeah, we have just a couple of... Morals and Trepidus walking about in here. They have their food. Nice, rotting in the sun. Lovely. Uh, what we're pretending in this park is that the dinosaurs actually drink from the fountain. So there's no, there's no regular water in this habitat. We're pretending that they just go splashy splashy in here. Which I think is pretty cu cute. It's obviously we're in sandbox so we can switch off the... Um, the need for the dinosaurs to actually drink. Now, aside from me using monorail tracks, decoratively, I did introduce a functional monorail into this park. It basically just goes all the way on the outskirts of the map so that the tracks are out of the way. They don't, like, overtake the scenery, which is my personal gripe with the monorail tracks. You can see them in the distance right there, and that's not too bad. That's how I usually prefer doing it. So yeah, just just huge, huge guest areas, obviously, to uh, to fill up some of the space. Over here we have Oviraptor, and they have quite a big enclosure, honestly. You can uh, you can see it strutting about over there. I love how the Oviraptor walks; it's so funny to me. All right, so we're gonna go up there because the Pyroraptors are up there. Another beautiful tree from the Mediterranean biome, right here in Pennsylvania. I love it so much. This is Probably my favorite tree, it needs to be said. This is a beautiful, beautiful tree. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go up. Uh, this way we could just go down, but we're not gonna do that, we're going up. These people are very excited about the tree. It is a good tree, I will admit that, it's a very good tree. Okay. Uh, we'll go into the other viewing gallery. So right here, there's just a concrete wall over here to direct the people to look over here because this is just a nice view, I think, into the Oviraptor habitat, the Dimorphodon aviary behind that. You can even see, you can even see the holding pens of our failed feather experiments. And if they come over here, they can see the Oviraptor snack on the meat. And there's a little shop over here, as well as a viewing gallery that looks into the Pyroraptor habitat. And I think they're close. Yeah! There they are. So yeah, they do, They just have like this enclosure on top of... Um, let's call it a mountain. I feel like that's a pretty generous term. Maybe just like a big, a big hill, realistically. Uh, but you know what I always say. Using elevation in your parks is super, super important. Because you, you get nice views like this. Like, look at that. You can see all the way to the uh, to the entry point right there with the, uh, the monorail structure. Alright, so we're going to speed up just a little bit as we go around here. Just for reference, that's where we came from. This one also looks into the Pyroraptor habitat. 
And we're gonna walk along here. You can already see our mode of transportation that is upcoming, which is the zip line. Uh, if people don't want to take the zip line, they can obviously just double back. That's okay. But I didn't want it to be a dead end necessarily. I should have probably changed this fence out with something else because it's a little obstructive. But you can see them walking about over there, living their best feathery life. Yeah, I just think it's super fun. Honestly, I should probably... I'm like, I keep thinking of ways to improve this park as I walk through it. But if you place like a couple of chairs or you know what would, you know what would be nice, Frontier? Benches. And just just watch people fly down the zip line would be very amusing to me. Also, we can look down into the Sinusoroptrix habitat. Uh, obviously, they're super small, so they're, they're a bit difficult to see from this elevated perspective. At the end here, we have another guest area. What's really interesting, by the way, is that... I took a picture of how busy it was on this very... Oh, I love the shadow. Hold on, I love the shadow. Let's wait, wait for it. Whee! <laughs> yeah, it was super crowded here earlier. So that's really interesting that it fluctuate, fluctuates and changes. Um, so we have a little guest section with many stuff like that. Little seating section and of course... The big zipline tower. I love when I place ziplines. I really love placing the starting point on one of my elevated plateaus. Just so the, the thing itself doesn't become super, super tall. Alright, going up. And fly. Alright, so that's the Jailopterus aviary. And here we get a nice view of the park and like the two islands. It looks more like a wide river, but it's it's more two islands or three rather. Bam. All right, so now we're all the way over here. Uh, we can't skip the jail optras. They are too cute to skip. So what I'm gonna, just quickly going to do is I'm going to run across this bridge. I just think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I like it. Oh, and over here you can see... The monorail that sort of snakes all the way around if people want to be lazy. We're not lazy. No, 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 no. Alright, so this is the Jailopter's aviary. <laughs> Fritz. <laughs> oh, God. There you go. They're going to be pretty much impossible to see, honestly. Oh, 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 there he goes, there he goes. Wee! Oh, I love them so much. They're so cute. Yeah, for these little guys, I do really recommend that you keep the aviary restricted to just to just one dome. Because you don't want them to, uh, to fly too far away because you won't be able to spot them. Alright, so running, 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 back across. And then this side of the park. So we already had... Oh no, no, I skipped a species. I totally skipped a species. Oh my god, I'm taking you back and forth. We're getting a good workout out of this one. Again... Trees from a different biome. Super, super awesome. So yeah, we nearly forgot to visit our prehistoric raccoons. And they're in here. This is what I should have done with the Morris and Trepidus habitat as well. Just line it with the uh, the brick walls. So there they are. I can't zoom in, but you can, you can see them. You can see them. And then this is just like a huge, huge promenade with amenities off on the side. Another big tree. And it's just another, like, nice viewing point. Alright, so now, now, now for realsies, we're gonna go over to the other side and watch some of the bigger feathered species. So I'm just taking you all the way back here. Hold on to your butts. Almost. There you go. So these viewing galleries look into the Dinochirus habitat. Let's take the middle one. Oh, hello. There you go. There are the big ducks. And you can see right there, we also have the log viewing galleries. Their entry buildings are way at the end of this park, or at least at the end of this park tour, the way I've planned it out. So we're going to be looking at that view later on in this video. All right. Uh, mix up the path colors quite a bit, not in terms of necessarily doing any path art. You know, I did like the little abstract feather at the start, for example. Uh, but I just wanted to, to switch up the path color once in a while. Because as I said, there is a lot of guest area in this park to sort of fill out the space, as you might imagine. Um, 
So yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I kept it interesting by here again, switching up the color so it doesn't get too boring. You can already see another zip line that I'm excited about because that's gonna give us a cool view of the T-Rex habitat and the T-Rex are living on a feathered shaped island. I guess it's not an island, I guess it's a peninsula because it is still attached. But look at this, that looks amazing, right? Oh my god, seriously? I would happily just sit here, have my lunch, overpriced or not, and just just watch those people, listen for the screams, try to spot there's the T-Rex right there. Two T-Rexes, we'll see them later. I also place like this viewing tower, actually two, wow, double it, give it to the next person. Uh, uh, the, uh, the glare's a bit much, but you can see what we were going for. You can see what the what the intent was. All right, so again, just a huge promenade. The frame rate sort of fluctuates quite a bit. I apologize about that. I Maybe I should have closed the park. I don't know. Let me know in a comment down below. Having the park open does lead to some stuttering in the frames. Is that worth it? I do feel like people prefer walking through a park that actually has guests in it. It literally just feels more alive that way. So I totally get it. So yeah, let me know in a comment down below. What do you, what do you prefer? Do you prefer maximizing the frame rates or do you, do you prefer also being able to watch the people walk around? Again, there's the entry point. And we're gonna go down here and we're gonna take the Gerosphere tour, which is gonna take us along our Feather Peninsula. So it's just off to the side. This is a nice secluded little area. I really like this. Like, this looks adorable. All right, so let's hop into the hamster ball. There you go. Oh, which way am I? This way. Hey, shouldn't you be working? What are you doing here? Are you like my, uh, my security escort? What is this? All right, uh, this way, it's a tight corner. We actually have three T-Rexes because obviously what, what I've done here to keep the hamster ball safe is I've lined the entire tour track with invisible fences. So the feathered peninsula is actually two separate habitats and there's two T-Rexes on one side and one on the other side. Um, I think that this feathered shape island slash peninsula thing all right, all right. I think it's super cool. It's not my idea, though. I saw this done by Rudy Renkamel. Um, he built a full feather island in Jurassic World Evolution 2 to sort of celebrate the feathered DLC. So I, I, I highly recommend that you check that out. I will link it in the description box. I totally got the idea from him. He usually does more Planet Zoo, but once in a while he sprinkles in a little bit of Jurassic World Evolution 2. And yeah, it totally inspired me. And I, I wanted to incorporate it into my feathered species park. So I sort of changed up the island on this side to, to turn it into a feather. And I think it's really, really cool. So yeah, we're literally just drive along the, the feather. We don't have to go to the very end, so I'll just, I'll just backtrack. And as you can see, the zip line crosses right over the middle of the feather, which is going to give us an even better perspective of it. Whoa, they're really close over here. No, don't be shy. Oh my god, we can cross. We can... <laughs> yeah, we can just... Okay, I did not fully realize that, but yeah, that makes sense. So we can do this. <laughs> we can just do that. Hello. This was a very bad idea. <laughs> I'm sure Dr. Grant would agree. All right, let's, t let's take it back to the station. I wish you could knock them into each other. That would be so fun. That would be like a mini game in and of itself, honestly. All right, we're just gonna cut through the foliage over here for a little bit. There you go. All righty, we're gonna, again, we're gonna get another view at that Feather Island. I think it's super, super cool. So going back up and just for reference, so you have a better idea of where we are. This is the path that goes straight back to the entry plaza. So this is one of the paths that we, that we look down. And of course it's, it's not just a path, it is one of those land bridges. There's the uh, sort of hotel peninsula. And now we're gonna look at what is the third feather-inspired little design element. So let's also pop into this one, see if we can get a cool perspective here. That's better, not too much glare. So yeah, that's pretty cool. 
You can see the, the feather just curving through there. So yeah, uh, over here. So this, this plaza also has like two feather, like abstract designs into the plaza itself to like garden sections that I thought was, was just a nice way to break up this huge area and use it for a little bit of nature. I, I had fun with it. I probably took the feather uh, inspiration a little bit too literal, but that's okay. That's okay, right? I mean, how often do you get to build a feathers inspired park? And like the stem of the feather leads into one of the monorail stations. We have three stations throughout the park. So guests can more easily hop throughout uh, the entire layout. All right, so I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit because we have to climb a bit of a hill. Be running up the road, be running up the hill. There you go. Ah, this is where all the people went. You know, I just like showing you guys the views and hammering on about the importance of elevation, so... Oh, well, there it is. There it is. And, of course, in this big aviary up on the top, you can already see it! It's taking off! Oh my god, that's kind of cool that you can already see it from the outside. So yeah, in here, excuse me, ma'am. Let's go in this one. So this is where we have the Quetzalcoatlus. Gonna land? Gonna touch down? Oh, oh, a little awkward, a little awkward. Yeah, um, I guess awkward is just the way to describe how Quetzalcoatlus fits into the aviary. Like, you can make the aviary as big as you want. It's always gonna look awkward just because it's not tall enough for them. We did our best, though. We did our best. That's a cool pattern for the cats. Yeah, touchdown. Come on, sit. There you go. Dusty! <coughs> okay, and now we're gonna take the zip line that goes across the Feather Peninsula. There's also a gyrosphere going through this aviary. Oh my god, what is happening with the cats over there? It's like a bat! Hold on, we need to see this. We need to see this. What the? Oh no! Honey, I broke the kits. I broke it! <laughs> okay. Sure. That's fine. This is totally normal. There you go. It got itself out. That's that's all that matters, really. He, he was just putting up a show. You know, he, he's giving the people what they want. Something interesting. Uh, what was I saying? Right, there's a Jarster tour that goes through that Quetzalcoatlus aviary. We don't have to do that. Let's fly across the feather. So there it is. When you make like a cool element like this in your parks, keep in mind that you actually want your guests to see it. Like obviously us as, as the camera in the sky, the all-knowing omnipotent god that creates these parks. Oh Jesus. <laughs> obviously we would already be seeing that awesome feather, right? But you, you want to make sure that when you're designing your, your park, that your guests can also see that sort of stuff. Even though there's no mechanic for it that improves anything if you do that, for yourself, for your own viewing experience of, of the park, you know, just have fun walking around your own parks. It's important that you make sure that you show off moments like that. And the viewing towers, but specifically the zip lines are a gr a, just a great way to achieve that. I also created like this, uh, this little seating section over here. Oh, I forgot to add the chairs. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was working so hard yesterday. I really wanted to get this video out yesterday on Easter. There was going to be a little Easter egg hunt in this video. Uh, but it, it, it was so much work to finish this park. I hope you can see that there is a high level of detail, which just took up a lot of time. Like for example, that path section up there is entirely lined with, with those rocks and uh, this bit as well. Just just stuff like that. It took way longer than anticipated. Uh, I don't know why I was talking about that. Oh, right. So I, I was rushing to finish this park yesterday. So yeah, walking through it, I do now realize that I, I missed a couple of a couple of tiny details as I was uh, trying to get this video out. I think... I think I should probably just accept for next time, because the video is a day late now anyway, right? I feel like I should have just accepted that earlier on, 
and spends a little bit more time finishing up the details. All right, so this is our Uteranus habitat. I think I should hop into the other one, actually. There you go, nice. Oh, he did like a little, he did a little pose for us, a little photo op. Nice, thank you very much. We have one sleeping right in front. So yeah, the Uteranus habitat, just super simple. We're on top of another hill again. I wanted to keep this habitat really open. You can see the goat in the distance. Oh, he just, he just hid himself. He was a little bit shy. Oh yeah, good morning. Little steppy step. There's the goat. <laughs> All right, and then from here... I'm gonna run a little bit. I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go over here. This is pretty cool. You can see that we are quite high, you know, compared to the uh, to the monorail, and the monorail itself is also already elevated. It's kind of cool, you know. It would be kind of relaxing see the train go by. So we're gonna go down again. A bit of a trek. <laughs> I lined it all <laughs> with stuff like this. I do like using these planters to line like inclined paths because they create this quite nice step pattern that I like. All right, so here are the entrances for the log galleries. I'm actually first going to take you to the regular viewing galleries down here. I really love something like this where the viewing galleries are in their own little secluded area. Now the openings to this area are quite big, so it's not too, too secluded but i like doing this just creating like a separate little area we'll we'll take the middle one again ah no luck i was hoping some would be eating <laughs> so yeah those are the log viewing galleries we're gonna go there next you can see that we have three in a row and using the trees i sort of hid the fact that it's three individual logs so we're pretending that it's one continuous thing, one longer tunnel that people can walk up and down, to and fro, left to right. I don't know the right phrasing here. All right, let's hop into the logs. There you go, we have a lot of ducks. And there's also a dinosaur on the other side, because if you were keeping count, of course, the duck is only the 10th species on the tour. If we switch, on this side, we have the Therizinosaurus. Cute. Actually, kind of terrifying, but also kind of cute. So yeah, obviously, because these are bigger dinosaurs, they can't walk under the log viewing galleries. So the log viewing galleries separate these two habitats into two separate habitats. That's kind of cool, because as a guest, it's kind of a shame that you can't just rotate the camera around to sort of give the effect that you have if you were actually here. But yeah, you have like the two different... The two different views within a single viewing gallery log. Alrighty, so that is the park with all of the feathered species currently in the game. You can see right here. So this is our, our island with the smaller creatures. And then this side of the park. So all the way from here to there. Those are the bigger animals. And initially this was a large island. But again, I really wanted to use this this feather design i really wanted to incorporate that and we had plenty of space because again it's only 11 species for a full park but you can see how fun it is to make your own islands and you can make you can make fun quirky shapes like this or you can just go for you know a more natural island shape and it's a way to really fill out your park without dropping your frame rates too much because all of this space you don't need to fill I hope you enjoyed this tour. If you did, give the video a like. I hope it has given you plenty of inspiration. And if it did, if you want to see more like this, consider subscribing to the channel. The channel is growing like crazy right now. I really appreciate it. Welcome to all of the new people. And thank you for everyone who's stuck with me for this long. I hope I can still give you new inspiration. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing. And until next time, enjoy the game. Mm -hmm.